A very happy Christmas, everybody. Welcome to The Ref Show. As you know, if you're close to this game, as we all are here, Carlton Palmer and Keith Hackett join us on our festive panel. There's been an absolute blizzard of football over the holiday period. There's going to be a blizzard of football just before the new year and into the new year as well. So rather than get snow blindness, because it's mm. absolutely impossible to do a normal kind of ref show, analyzing uh, incident in detail, because there's just so much of it, we're gonna be general, but no less entertaining for it, because there's so many issues in refereeing to discuss all the time. We're gonna talk about the diving panel, Carlton Palmer's uh, view on that. We think that you are the ref has got to grips with grappling mm. in the way that referees have in the last year. But first of all, video refereeing. And it's going to become very, very topical early in the new year with a trial match in the FA Cup, Keith. Yeah, well, I'm very positive that VAR, as they call it, will improve refereeing because we've got major shortfalls in accuracy of referees through, in fairness to them, 22 cameras watching every minute of every second of the game and the errors that they make and highlighting them. So to get some balance... The VAR is going to come in and it will enhance the game. But there's a massive warning bell that I'd like to ring because like anything that's new, you've got to get used to it. And referees have got to get used to the VAR and they've got to build their own confidence. Now, what has happened in the MLS is that in the first few weeks of its operation, uh, the, the referees were seeing it if almost as a, a criticism of their decision. Mm. They didn't see it as a plus point. And on some occasions, they actually went with the VAR when their original decision was accurate. So we're mm. gonna still, the human element says, we're gonna make mistakes. And the VAR is not the, 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 the be all and end all. So Carlton, I've heard that many a commentator say, hey, this is gonna uh, create more problems than it solves. There's going to be more controversy rather than less. What do you think? Yeah, it's complicating the game for me. I mean, what what they can do is for the referees, which which I'm I'm sure they do now. Anyhow, is after the game, a panel can sit down with the referee and go through this in privacy. So you know you're not belittling the referee publicly because it's difficult for that man who's in 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 the middle. Like Keith says, they've got cameras everywhere. They've got the benefit mm. of of replays. I've been in the studio when a de when a decision's been close and we've replayed it and replayed it and replayed it and replayed it and still yeah. can't get the right decision. So you're not a fan? No, I, I think we you, retrospectively they can watch the game with a panel and, and, and somebody like Keith who's got all, a wealth of experience can say, well, you can handle that differently or see that a bit better or be but in that position. We're talking about instant justice, putting something right but, but it's a not mistake. Be, or... But I'm just saying to you, it's not going to be instant justice in some in some cases. It'll be too blurred. It, 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 it's going to be still impossible to, to, to make the right call on it. Yeah. So so the talking points that we have and we like on a, on a Saturday evening in the pub, you know, are still going to be, yeah, there's, there's, there's still going to be talking points. And I suppose as a player, you wouldn't have liked it if, heaven forbid, you made a wrong decision on where to pass the ball and suddenly it was stop. Let's have a look at this. Why has Carlton Palmer gone square there when he should have gone the other side of the field? I mean, you know, like I've said... Similar, in, isn't it? No, no, but when, when I played and, uh, you know, you're starting to get into the late, you know, late 80s, early 90s, we did watch back the games and mm -hmm. looked at positioning, looks where you're making a run. And, mm -hmm. you know, Ron and Howard would say, you know, positioning sense and whatever. That's how you learn. Mm -hmm. You've got to look at how you perform to get better. Mm -hmm. But what you shouldn't be doing is put more of a spotlight on what's already a very, very difficult job. Mm. That is a danger. But Keith, it would seem that in America, uh, under Howard Webb's guidance over yes. there, they seem to have pretty well, well, I was going to say perfected, but they haven't. But they've got it running quite well, haven't they? Video refereeing there. Yeah, in because I, I, I think that the way I look at it, and I think to some degree the way Howard has talked and educated the referees and done a good job, is, is, is around that... Uh, look, treat the VAR as though he's an assistant referee on the sideline. Mm, a and friend. he is in, inputting to you the view through a couple of quick looks that that is a penalty kick. It is inside or it's outside. So you're saying it's no different to a consultation with an assistant referee, actually? Well, I mean, look, this this weekend we've had, we've had a, a couple of decisions where it's been absolutely on the edge of the penalty area line. And both decisions uh, were given uh, correctly outside. 
Yeah, the, I mean, the one yesterday, Tottenham... Uh, uh, terrific uh, so, call, Well, well I, I called straight away. I thought it was a penalty. Mm. Yeah, and, I and, 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 and the re and replay showed it was a, it was a correct call by the oh. referee. Chris, Chris Cavanna yeah. uh, was the referee. A brilliant call. Now, if there's any doubt about that, that input could have come in very quickly. Chris, mm. it's outside decision. Now, mm. if he'd been inside, he could have said, Chris, that's inside. No, I agree so, with you on that. So I, I, th I think it's, it's how it's used... Right, mm. and let's not overcomplicate it. Correct. Mm. Well, it's coming in in the bright. They've chosen a relatively low profile, <laughs> haven't they? Uh, <laughs> FA Cup tie, and they've and it's going to be the Monday rather than during the main FA Cup weekend. It, but it will be on TV. Brighton v Crystal Palace, Monday, mm. January the eighth, mm. for the first experiment in a high. Well, in in our professional game. With yes. the VAR, the FA Cup. Well, I mean, it's an historic um, uh, situation. I think it's great that they're doing that. Um, and, and But I wonder how TV is going to communicate uh, that the VAR has been used. Mm. Because I still think the VAR, below the line, will be used without any public yeah. sort of demonstration. And isn't that better? Because taking Carlton's point, it, well, it doesn't compromise the authority of the referee if it's private conversations taking place. It doesn't matter if it's with an assistant referee you can correct. see or somebody in the stand, does it? Yeah, yeah. I it's don't want to see, Alan, I don't want to see the guy, the referee, having to go to the touchline and consult. No. You know, we, no. we, saw, we saw Bobby Madley yesterday in a game uh, rule a goal out offside uh, the, the referee, gave, the assistant referee, gave offside, right? Correctly, hmm. and madly suddenly has to go across and have a big debate. I don't know why he was no, doing he that. No, he's, he's given it, and he said yeah. it was offside. It, so trust your lines. Just give an offside. Yeah. Yeah. You know the yeah. flag's there. Give the offside, and as a consequence, why why did he have to go across? Because. You know, I gave them communication kits to avoid that. Mm. This was a this was the Bournemouth uh, West Ham game. Finished three three, and it was a late late uh, equaliser, wasn't it? West Ham, justifiably not happy about it. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. But it's like Keith yeah. said, it, you, you've got your your they're, they're part of your team, mm. and and he's going across, and that creates more of a hysteria. Yeah. If mm. he just goes with, he can question his his linesman when he gets back inside. When he, mm. you know, when the game's finished, they can have the debate about it. But if he's given it, he should have trusted him. Bang, like Keith says, and on you go. Mm. And that's where Carlton and I have a shared view about the use of the VAR. It mm. can all be done below the line, and and we're not and aware. There was the another. important thing on all this yeah. is the accuracy of the decision. Right. Correct. Well, there was another one, wasn't there, in that game where Simon Francis of Bournemouth should have been should have been sent off. Well, I in I, your I, view, I think. I mean, or I, Carl's, Carl's not quite yeah. convinced about that. No, I wasn't. It's no, an it, accidental. Well, thing. well, it's to be, and this is the thing. If you're going to send mm. a player off, yeah. right? Because in this day and age now, effectively, you've killed the game. Mm. You've got to be ninety nine percent sure, and it, even still. I've watched it two or three times, and it's... So I think in that situation, you, you can't send him off. It's, it's not deliberate, but it doesn't have to be, does it? No. <laughs> and, and, this is the and, complication. And, and this is where the change in law some years ago made it more difficult for referees, in fairness, mm. because the word endangering the safety of an opponent comes into play. Yeah. So this is, this is a little bit like the responsibility that's now put on the shoulders of the player and a duty of care towards his opponent. Mm. In the past, in my day, those things would just free kick and away you go. The guy goes off or someone comes on with a bucket of water, throws it all over him. Yeah, but you say a duty of care of yeah. the player, but it's also a duty of care of the opposing player, to be honest. I seen one yesterday in the Spurs um, no, uh, Southampton, uh, Southampton game, game yeah. with Vertonghen and Shane Long. Right. And he's caught him, but yeah. he, he, he's a tough centre forward, and he's gone down feigning as if uh, Vertonghen yeah. smashed him in the face. Yeah. He's, caught, he's caught him. He's a tough lad, you, yeah. you know, and he's rolling out, he's down, the, the physio comes on, and you can see him before. If somebody's hurt, 
Alan. You know. You, Keith, you know this. If somebody's hurt, they go down. They don't start looking around Correct. first and no. foremost before they go down. They and that's what Shane did. And they don't go rolling and around the either, do they? Because they're, how can the referee... How can, we see that on the TV, but how can the referee see that a player's actually conning him? So mm. it's about a code of conduct, yeah. right? Mm. And this is coming, with all due respect, from the foreign players. Because on the continent, it's the done thing. Anybody mm. comes anywhere near you, you go down. We, they don't see it as cheating. They see it as kind of pushing the barriers of yeah, the law. Yeah. Well, th that leads us nicely on to part two because... Uh, in part two, we'll be talking about diving and simulation and the steps that the FA have taken, baby steps maybe, mm. um, to eradicate it. We'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about dissent. I think maybe you'll agree there's less of it. The standards of refereeing and also the remarkable circumstance of one match in the championship seeing two managers lose their jobs just after one mm. match in the championship. One of Carlton's former clubs involved in that. Do rejoin us.